morning and welcome to St. Peter's and to our celebration of the sixth Sunday of Easter. Whether you're a regular member of our community or joining us from someplace else, or this is your first time, I hope you know how welcome you are in this place and also what a blessing your prayers and presence are to our community. We're so glad you're here. As we gather today, we respectfully acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral lands of the Duwamish people. The Duwamish people are still here, and with gratitude we pay our respects to them as they continue to honor and bring to light their ancient heritage. While we prepare for worship, please take a moment to download a copy of the bulletin for today if you haven't already. We hope you will take part fully and actively. Again, thank you for joining us. We're so glad you're here. Welcome. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man 
reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning, everyone. I have been given the gift of technology to be in two places at once this morning. St. Andrews in the Green Lake neighborhood where I serve as the part-time associate rector and also with the beloved people of St. Peter's, Seattle, where I have been a guest priest in the past and have the honor of being your preacher today while Father Edmund is receiving rejuvenation on his sabbatical. So good to be with you all. So, I have a question for you this morning. Are women human beings? The anonymous tract Disputatio Novo Contra Mulieres Qua Probator Eis Homines Non Esse which is translated as a new argument against women in which it is demonstrated that they are not human beings, was first published in 1595, rapidly grew notorious, and was reprinted many times during the 17th and 18th centuries. By selectively quoting scriptural passages, along with a few references to other works, the author attempted to prove that women have no souls and, being little better than higher animals, will have no afterlife. Although a degree of anti-feminine spite is clearly evident, the author was less intent to denigrate women than to advance an absurd argument parallel to what he took to be the equally absurd theological propositions of the Sosician sect. They did not believe in the Trinity and also that Christ was not divine. It was nevertheless inevitable that most readers of the time would take the tract at face value. Many re refutations appeared and they had an impact on early modern feminist thought. Now, that sort of argument astounds us today, right? But if you look at history, how often have we human beings tried to ex exclude other humans, whether it be by gender, by race, by nationality, we tend to think of things in terms of who is in and who is out, even now, especially now. I just read an article by Caitlin Dickerson in the May Atlantic magazine about how only immigrants to the United States from Northern and Western European descent were considered white well into the 20th century. Jews and Italians were not considered white, and the Irish were also prejudiced against. Then, of course, sadly, there are the centuries of racial stereotypes and prejudice against anyone with shades of darker, non-white skin, and anyone with a foreign passport. Exclusion in human life seems to be the name of the game. And yet, we as Christians are called to something different. God measures by and includes and moves in other ways, surprising ways, astounding ways. Look at how the Holy Spirit moved in our story of Acts today. People believe that they know what is best, that they know what God wants. The Jewish Christians that were with Peter as he was preaching to the Gentiles could not believe that the Holy Spirit would not just come to, but be poured out on the Gentiles too. After being witness to that, Peter's question of, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received this Holy Spirit just as we have, seems like a, mute, a moot point. Our world and faith community includes all sorts of people. Even people we are astounded that God includes. People that we perhaps cannot bring ourselves to like even a little bit. And yet, we are called to live in community with them. How are we to do this? In our gospel today, Jesus calls us to abide in love. The word abide is not a word we hear often today or use regularly. But it is a great word, isn't it? According to the dictionary, it means to remain, continue, stay, to continue in a particular condition, attitude, or relationship. Being in relationship is what God is all about. 
is what Jesus is all about. Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. We are to continue to be in loving relationship with Jesus so that we will know God's love for us and in turn have love to give others. But what does it mean to abide in God's love today? How do we do it? What does that feel like? Jesus says that if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus tells us this so that our joy may be complete. The commandments to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves are not to make us feel controlled or to hurt us, but instead are for our own good, so that our joy will be complete. It is when we open ourselves to God's will that we are able to bear the richest fruits of abiding in God's love. And what does this fruit look like if we abide, if we live within Jesus' love? Jesus tells us that he has appointed us to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. How does a community bear fruit that is lasting? How do we make God's love known to others? As I thought about these questions, they reminded me of a story that I heard about Henri Nouwen. Henri Nouwen was a Roman Catholic priest who had a prestigious teaching career, teaching at schools such as Notre Dame, Yale, and Harvard. He left Harvard to share his life with the mentally handicapped people in the large community of Daybreak in Toronto, Canada. Soon after he arrived at Daybreak, he was asked to help one of the mentally handicapped members, a man named Adam, with his morning routine. Henri had to wake Adam up, bathe him, shave him, dress him, comb his hair, and position him in his wheelchair before making and having breakfast. After breakfast, he had to brush Adam's teeth, put on his coat, gloves, scarf, and boots, and push him to his day program in another building. In response to this, Henri writes, I was aghast. I simply didn't think I could do this. Why should I, the least capable of all the people in the house, be asked to take care of Adam and not of someone who needs are a bit less? The answer was always the same. So you can get to know Adam. As time went on, Henri did indeed get to know Adam. He allowed himself to be open to God's will, abiding in God's love by living out the commandment that Jesus commissioned all of us to do, to love one another as I have loved you. The fruits of this love were apparent to other members of the community and to outsiders looking in. Later, Henri wrote that Adam taught him three essential principles about becoming more fully human. And I think they are key in understanding how we may abide in God's love while living in community. He wrote, being is more important than doing. God's love is more important than the praise of people. And being together is better than being alone. The mark of a faithful community is how it loves, not who its members are. When we act in response to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on us, we desire to do works of love. And in fact, this is the tangible sign of discipleship, of following Jesus. It is through com our community that we become more fully human. And it is also through community that we deeply engage with God's love, not excluding, but including, being expansive. And most of all, it is through this love that God continues to astound us. Amen.
let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, May we daily perceive the joy and wonder of your abiding presence flowing through us as we strive to follow and live into your commandment to love one another as you have loved us. Hear our prayers for the needs of the church, the world, and your people everywhere. For the church in every place, and especially for the gifts and ministry of the baptized within our St. Peter's community. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. For the world, an inequitable distribution of the world's wealth and resources. 
for people and communities ravaged by the global pandemic, especially India, and the effects of climate change, poverty, conflict, terrorism, and war. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. For the nation, for this city, and the communities in which we live, and for your spirit of wisdom and justice upon all serving in leadership and elected positions. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. Guide us with your abiding love and give us a spirit of compassionate wondering. We pray for the courage and strength to stand up, speak out, and act in solidarity against all forms of racism and bigotry, especially continuing violence and hatred targeting our black, brown, indigenous, AAPI, all people of color and our diverse siblings. Protect the most vulnerable in our midst and those living their lives in fear. O living God, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially Taylor, Caleb, Suma, Nabi, Masafumi, Suneko, Tai, John and Sadako, Heath, John Anthus, Tom, Donna, Charles, Mindy and Kelly, Michael B, Rich and Steve. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. We pray for the comfort and consolation of all who mourn beloved family and friends as they are welcomed into the light of God's face, especially Franz, Jim Thibodeau Sr., Janice and Katz. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Announcements before the conclusion of our liturgy this morning. First, thanks again for joining us. Your prayers and presence are a blessing to our community and we are so glad you're here. We have one announcement today. On Saturday, May 15th, which is next Saturday, the Circles of Color Asian American and Pacific Islander Circle is sponsoring an outdoor service of lament. This is an opportunity to acknowledge and share the grief of the times we're living in in this country and the world lamenting the reality of racism and discrimination against people of color and LGBTQIA plus people, hate crimes against women and communities of color, the destruction of the earth, and the need to transform our society for greater justice, mutual understanding, and sustainability. 
the service will end on a message of collective hope and shared commitment to embody the call of our baptismal covenant and to love and celebrate our diversity united in community. The service will be held in the parking area of Trinity Episcopal Church in Everett and masks are required. Again, the date for this liturgy of lament is May 15th at 2 p.m. You can find more details in this week's bulletin. Lastly, please be sure to join us for coffee hour on Zoom after our liturgy in a few minutes and also for Compline this evening at 9 p.m. on Facebook. You can find the Zoom link for coffee hour in our bulletin as well as on our webpage, stpeterseattle.org. Thank you and see you at coffee hour on Zoom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>